Okay, hi and hello and welcome everyone. It is Wednesday. Let me just let me just adjust the, the music slightly. Um, it is Wednesday, which means it is time for another mini mayhem. I am your host, V Muse, and today we're gonna be getting spacey with it, and I can't wait because let me tell you, uh, this is very much my jam. I am one of those people who absolutely love space AG, fun things like that. Uh, so I'm I'm looking forward to all of this, to say the very, very least. Uh, to all of those who are in the chat ahead of time over on YouTube, it was so great to see you there, the early birds. Thank you so much for joining in. That was fantastic to see. Thank you so much. Uh, if you are new to the channels, whether it is YouTube or Twitch, uh, please be sure to subscribe, like, follow, all that loveliness. Uh, so if you're over on the YouTubes, just make sure you hit the uh, subscribe button and you can also ring that bell so you'll know when we go live for things like Mini Mayhem, as well as for our other live stream called Much Ado About Gaming, which deals with our fantastic board game lines that we have going with Jessa Blackthorn. And uh, you'll also get notifications when we have things go up like our Scott Porter unboxing videos for Hero Clicks. Uh, also, while you're here, if you happen to be watching and enjoying yourself, don't forget to hit the like button button because that is quite helpful and appreciated. Uh, so yes, if you are new to Mini Mayhem, uh, please take a look over here. You're going to notice I have a new setup going and this is because since we are doing the two streams to both Twitch and YouTube, I wanted to be sure y'all had a chance to interact with each other. So this means that if you look over at this window, you're actually seeing everyone who is participating in the chats, both from Twitch as well as from YouTube. The little icons are telling you where everyone is participating and where they are watching. Um, I'm just here for the upright bear Avengers, says Kalkis. <laughs> yes, we're gonna have some fun today. Oh my gosh, these minis. Oh, they're so much fun. I just I had fun looking through them earlier. But anyways, today we are taking a look at the Starfinder Battles uh, plan Planets of Peril, and they are ever so much fun. I'm one of those people where I grew up on things like, um, you know, Star Trek and Star Wars and uh, what was it? Um, oh, why am I blanking on the one, you know, Danger, Will Robinson. Uh, so like those types of shows and movies and things like that, they are very much my jam, as I said before. So this particular line, I am so excited to share with you because regardless of whether you play Starfinder or not, if you're one of those people who really gets into sci-fi, collection wise this is a very cool one thank you everyone lost in space oh my gosh chat Mwah. thank you so much yes lost in space uh that's another one of those old shows that i used to watch as a kid and everything like that what did you miss you wish you missed me geeking out over sci-fi stuff <laughs> that's basically it um so yes that is gonna be one of those things where we're gonna take a look at starfinder I keep feeling like I'm, I feel like I'm saying the wrong thing because I'm so used to saying Pathfinder, but we're going to be looking at Starfinder Battles, Planets of Peril, both the premium set, which is the docking bay, as well as the miniatures you're going to be finding in the brick. And we're going to talk about how this is all set up because there are some nuances to this particular set, which, you know, as long as you're aware of it, I think it's totally cool. But I want to make sure that everyone is um, cognizant that there are a couple differences between Starfinder and Pathfinder in what we offer. Um, oh God, yes, Battlestar Galactica, Bob Rogers, uh, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy, even that one was like, hello, yes, please, thank you. Um, but really it's one of those things where it's a, it's a fun line, it's a cool line. If you're like me and you really like the spacey, cool things, uh, you're gonna like this collection. And Shannon just pointed out a very fantastic point. If you have a question for me at all, please be sure in the chat to type in all caps, question, and then your question following because that caught my attention right away. So Shannon is asking, will there be full height angles and curve walls available for the Warlock tile set? There are plans to make sure that what we have for one inch is happening for two inch, all right? Uh, I just wanna make sure that is clear. We, we are trying to make sure that the people who prefer their one inch high sets have their one inch high sets and the ones who prefer the two inch high have their two inch high. So hopefully that clears things up for you. Uh, just keep in mind, there's a staggering. Not everything's gonna come out at once. It's, you know, this will happen then this will happen type of thing. Um, I don't have dates or anything like that for you yet, but we are trying to make sure that what happens for one does happen for the other, provided the demand is there, of course. Now remember, things can change, things can adjust. You can't always hold me to it, but you know, this is exactly what's gonna happen. Just keep that in mind too, but that is the intention. So hopefully that clears that up for you, Shannon. Um, and I do have plans on doing some stuff with the curves and angles for the one inch next week. All right, uh, I'm gonna look at the, I think I, I think it's gonna be the dungeon tile ones first. So we're gonna take a look at curves and angle dungeon tiles next week for Warlock. For those of you just jumping in and they wanna know what happens for next week, that's the plan for next week. Alrighty, oh, you're very welcome, happy to help. 
So that being said, I'm going to go and basically let's talk about uh, Starfinder Battles, Planets of Perils. Uh, this is basically the first set that we have coming out that has the whole brick setup with a premium set. Uh, before we have had uh, individual packages where you had the galactic villains as well as the galactic heroes that came out over the summer of 20, 2020, yes, because we're in 2021. Uh, those were really cool and fun to look at. If you haven't seen them yet, I highly recommend you go online and check it out or check it out with your FLGS. Please remember, I'm always going to advocate that you check with your FLGS, your friendly local game store first, whenever it comes time for making purchases or placing pre-orders, because they are oftentimes making uh, accommodations and doing what they can on their end to make sure that they are giving you what you need, keeping within the parameters of staying safe. So whether it's things like they will do curbside pickup, they will do scheduled appointments, they will do shipping for an additional fee, uh, very often. Oh, thank you very much, Calcius. That's exactly the type of feedback I enjoy hearing. I will dial the music down a bit. Thank you so much. Okay, so they will be doing what they can on their end to get the product to you. If you are looking for a store near you, make sure you go to whizkids.io slash local store. You go to that website link, you can plug in your information, you can even put in how far you're willing to travel, and that will pull up a list of local game stores that carry WizKids products for you, and you can pick and choose from there where you wanna go. If you have done that, if there is not a store near you, which I understand happens, especially depending on where you live, um, what you can then do is go to shop.wizkids.com. All right, that is our online store. We carry our products there, obviously, but you can go and check things out there. So keep in mind for today, everything you're going to see right now is up for pre-order, all right? This line is scheduled to release. Target release date, target is very important. Please keep that in mind because shipping is fun right now. <laughs> um, target release date is March 17th. So this month is when this will be releasing in stores. So right now, everything you're gonna see today is available for pre-order. Information is down below in the description. And hello, Gallant Goblin, lovely to see you. Um, Bobby, I gotta say, I've met a few people that have been absolutely fantastic at local game stores, so I'm not gonna knock them at all. They have been nothing but lovely to me, especially my local game store, the Dragon's Horde. You guys are fantastic. Uh, so that being said, um, -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. I'm going to first take a look at the premium set, okay? So we're gonna look at the premium set, which I think is quite fun. Um, Younger V would be all over this and have been playing with it as a child up into adulthood because of all the coolness that goes into this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the packaging for it and then I'm gonna be taking it out of my uh, preview box. So there's kind of a little two things happening at once deal. But uh, let's look at the premium set first, which is the docking bay, okay? So the docking bay goes along with the brick and that is going for $59.99. Again, this is up for pre-order. So let's go to the overhead and let me show you the packaging here. So you can see right off the bat, we have, actually, no, let me go back up to the main. All right, so main first. So here you have, so this is the docking bay. This is the premium set to the Starfinder Battles, Planets of Peril. All right, so here's the packaging for it. You have this lovely spaciness going on. You can see all the pieces through here, through the window. You have the logos on the side of the packaging. And the back, you get some awesome artwork right through here, as well as renders of the pieces that are included in the premium set and your set list right there. So inside this, you're going to be getting one cargo hauler, one flatbed trailer, two two inch by two inch shipping crates, two one inch by two inch shipping crates, four one inch by one inch containers, and one bench. All right, that's everything that's going into this. So now that you know everything that's in the box and you've seen what's on the outside of the box, let's take a look at everything individually. You know, get the up close and personal treatment. So we're gonna flip over. Da da da! And let me get myself set up here. Young V playing with the items, adult V1. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna be tossing the packaging around this time because I actually have things handy here. Okay, so this is, let's start with the bench because the bench is right there for me. So this is what I'm talking about. So here we have this very cool space AG bench, clearly the metallic silver and very simplistic lines. I mean, this is something you very, very easily would find in some sort of like, you know, spaceship station 
etc. But I like that it has that futuristic clean feel. And it just has, you know, information on the bottom here. Oh, and by the way, this is a mood ring, folks. Your eyes aren't playing tricks on you if you see it changing colors. Okay. <laughs> I just realized that the other day. People were like, oh, wasn't that ring a different color? Yes, it was a minute ago, but then all of a sudden I got cold. So that is the bench that comes in this set. Now let's take a look at... Hold on. I have four of these to take out so you can see them. These I thought were so much fun. Uh, so this is going into, hold on, let me just move a couple things here. So here are your four containers, all right? So these are the four containers straight up and you can see they have that great industrial futuristic look to them. And you get four of them, two with the orange, two with the, we're gonna say lime green here. Yeah, the containers actually are a very good, all of these plastics are nice and solid. These have a good weight to them. You're gonna put them on the table. They're not gonna knock over easily, all right? That is a big thing for me whenever I go to use terrain in gameplay. If you're putting these scatter pieces down and you are constantly having to readjust and fix it, it gets to be frustrating. That's not the case with these because this is even like a no skid mat, all right? So you can tell this has some good resistance and heft to it. So they are solid pieces. All right. Um, oh, that's interesting. Gallant Goblin is saying that, you know, kind of treat them almost like bombs. That would be one way to use them. So there's there's a lot of different ways you could you could use these as sort of like, you know, hazardous waste, um, oxygen tanks, everything like that. But they're just those great sort of generic tank like presentations. And you can spin them however you need to into your gameplay and you get four of them. So let me take the one. I'll take one. I'm gonna set these up over here. So you can see it a little bit more closely now. But as you can see, you get this worn metal look, these fantastic rivets, and more of these details here. And the base just has, again, more of that information. Nothing too fancy. That's essentially what each of these look like. Again, you have a lime green option, and then there's an orange, so two of each of those. So those are the containers. Now let's go over to the flatbed, right? Uh, duh, 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 duh. Let's pull this out. So here is the cargo hauler and the flatbed trailer. Okay, so you get this and obviously the two of them lock together and you have, and I love the color here. It's like an army green, but futuristic because it has that metallic sheen to it. It's not that muted matte army green that you'll often see on military vehicles. But look at these wheels. That's what I really wanted to show off. I mean, those are wheels that are gonna grip into some spacey planetary terrain. It gives it that more of immersive feel. Show you top here. And there is enough space in here. I'll show you in a minute. There's enough space in here to be able to place miniatures too, which is wonderful. Again, it's just that quick little latch in, latch out. The wheels don't spin, just keep that in mind. They're not functioning wheels. But here's the base or the bottom. So some detail even goes with that. So you could even have it where this is flipped over and it's still visually interesting. So there was an explosion, the vehicle's flipped over. You still get that carry through, same thing on here. See, all those details carry through, but let me put that down, latch that in, and then let me just quickly grab one of the minis. Uh, let's play with, we'll take one of you. So this is one of the minis I'll show later on, but you can just pop a mini there. Okay, you can get one mini in there, but you can actually, there you go, slide it under, <clears throat> slide it under the seats and you can pop a mini in. So you can get one of the minis in there at least to stage it that someone is driving. I think that's a fantastic feature that you can actually interact. You can interact with that piece and make it more um, hands-on that way. But like I said, the wheels don't rotate. They're not functioning wheels. But again, you'll be able to pop things on top. Oop. Just like that. So you can get all four of the canisters on. Just pull that out of frame. Mew, mew. So that is uh, additional pieces. And then we're gonna take a look at the containers. So here we have the one by two inch ones and then the two by two inch ones I'll show you. So you get two of these, 
very much the, hold on. There we go, there's the top. So very much cargo containers in look. Again, industrial metallic details. Sort of that beaten up brushed silver to it. You could even play it that there could be something in there because this looks like ventilation. Like so. Yeah, you would be able, Tango Matt, to attach additional trailers into this because you see there's a hook right there. So you could create a little train if you wanted to. But these are the one by two inch. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Make a little train. So if you had more of those, you could, you know, stack them up right behind. So you get two of those. And again, these are solid, solid pieces. I'll show you, see? I'm trying to knock it over, but it stays nice and upright. So it's one of those things where if you have a player who likes to reach up and over and interact with the terrain, they're not gonna easily knock things over and then you have to reset everything because kablooey, everything just went on you. Uh, that's something I really do like to point out when it comes to scatter pieces, when it has a good presence to it, when it has a good heft to it. It's extremely helpful to have that uh, ready and at hand. Now these are the two inch by two inch. So they're a little bit chonkier and talk about having some heft to them. I mean, they do have a good weight and you can see here, this is the bottom. All right. So, you know, you're at the bottom when you have this piece without the rivets on it, but this is basically what it looks like from all sides. You have the rivet detail. This is more of like a brushed coppery color metal, but it's essentially the same on all sides. Even the top, you get that same metal work detail but you can play this as anything like it has something inside of it. It's, you know, equipment, storage. It, it has some really awesome potential to it in terms of how you want to use it in your scatter and in your terrain. So again, this is the two inch by two inch crate. All right. So that is everything that you get in the premium set. You get two of your two inch by two inch you get two of your one inch by two inch crates. Okay, those are your crates. Then you get your four containers, two with the orange caps, two with the lime green tops. You get your bench, and then you get your trailer and flatbed. Or the cargo hauler, I should say. Car cargo hauler and your flatbed trailer. So that's everything that goes into this. All right. So that's your premium set. And it really is, like I said, the plastic is a nice hefty piece. It's one of those things where all of this is nicely stationary on the table, uh, which I appreciate. Um, <laughs> you love those containers so bad, says Dan. Well, I'm glad you love them so bad. Again, and if you're interested, this is up for pre-order. Contact your local game store. Local game store, not an option. Then that's where you can go to shop.wizkids.com. Uh, definitely make sure you grab your lunch, Gallant Goblin. It, you know, you got to take the time to eat and have something in there for your system. So let me clear the table here quite literally. And then we're going to start taking a look at the miniatures that are going to come into the uh, bricks. But while I'm doing that, let me talk about... Hold on. You go live here. I'm trying to remember where everything goes back in the containers. So again, um, with the bricks, it's the same deal as always. You know what? I'm almost done. Let me do this. There we go. Let me grab a brick. So let's talk about the bricks now. The bricks are again, you have the eight boosters in a brick, just like with Pathfinder, same thing. However, it's going to be a different pull. So when you go to pick up your bricks, this is the packaging again, complements what you have for the docking bay. You have that bit, the dark spacey background, the whole logo with the art planets apparel, Starfinder battles. You get little pictures of some of the minis on the sides here as well as on the back, you get a little nod to the docking bay station. 
And also the website where you can go and check things out more for Starfinder Battles with Paizo. So you will be getting, when it comes time to it, you get eight boosters in a brick, okay? So in those boosters, what you are going to find, this is where difference comes in. You're going to have three minis in a pull from this particular set, as opposed to the four that you will find in Pathfinder. This means that you're working with a total of 32 figures for this collection. I want to make sure that is very clear. So when you go to pull, you will have three figures in each booster. All right. So there is a slight difference. That also means that when you go to buy a brick, a brick is $119.92 for a brick and each booster is $14.99. So those are your prices. Again, all that information is in your description. Uh, so just keep that in your head when it comes time to purchasing these. It's not that you're going to have your four minis. You're actually going to have your three minis. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you all of the minis that you have a chance to see in this collection. Uh, but this is what you're going to be looking for when you go to order. If you want a booster, this is your booster. When you go for a brick, it's going to be eight of these packaged together. Keep that one in mind and welcome back. Okay. Let me put this over here and uh, I'm going to take a quick minute here. Friday night clicks. I see your comments and I appreciate your comments. Please keep in mind that this show is in particular, in particular, based upon our RPG products. So right now I will not be speaking to our hero clicks products. And it's one of those things where I cannot give you advice or guide you any further upon what I can do with availability in the UK for hero clicks. But I will say that our shop .com does carry products and does ship to the UK. So perhaps you want to take a look at that website and see if that might be of some service to you. Uh, so thank you for letting me know, but I cannot answer that any further for you. All right. That being said, let's start taking a look into our lovely miniatures for the boosters and the bricks. Okay. So the first one I'm going to share with you. And again, these are all on the clear bases. Remember the clear bases are what are becoming the norm with whiz kids miniatures. All right. So that is just something to keep in mind. You're going to see those black bases getting phased out. So here we have we're going to be looking at the Jinsel Warrior, and this one is one of 32. So let me get this so that it is actually, let me pull up my focus. I just need to get to the right. Cause I want to play around. I had to pull it out a little bit for the set, but you know, I like, if you're new here, I always will play around with my focus a little bit. Da, 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 da but I want you to see, there we go. Okay. So here you have the Jinsel warrior, one of 32. Take a look at this one. I love how it's this mechanical and organic blend of a creature. And you have, have it holding this looks like some sort of a gun laser gun perhaps i'm not familiar with starfinder itself i have played other role-playing games in more spacey environments but not a starfinder player oh thank you gallant goblin so yes this is the jinsel warrior it's this fantastic mid-tone purple with this gunmetal black armor on them. The rarity is comparable, but obviously this, the counts because of it being 32, it's adjusted slightly, so to speak. But yes, you do have your rarities in them. So you have that fellow, that's the Jinsel warrior. And then moving along, this one, I think is a fun one. Here you have your, I'm not quite sure how to say the name here. This is a Ninhilge, I think. Nihilj, Nihilj, N-I-H-I-L-J, but it is two of 32. But you have this space suit with this creature on the inside. Oh, 
is this light blue hair. The spacesuit itself is this very, you know, ivory tone. Some gold accents and some taupe in there. Getting to the focus sweet spot there for you. He looks like the creature from the Doctor Who episode in the library. Oh. Okay, well, that's good to know. This is what happens when, uh, as the Gallant Goblin said, someone dies in the vacuum of space and comes back as an undead. Lovely. So, yes, don't forget, go and check out Gallant Goblin as well. They always have some great coverage of our uh, collections as well and also incorporates the lore, which is very much appreciated. This is more of like a preview of the miniatures so you can see the minis themselves and know what you can expect in the sets. Uh, they take it a step further by giving you more of the context in the game and everything like that. Okay, so this is the next one, which I think is absolutely adorable. And here you have the Electrovore, right? The Electrovore, which is three of 32. Kind of like a carnivore, but it eats electricity. That is just totally me ad-libbing that one in. Uh, but it's this vibrant, vibrant orangey red with this great accent color of a kiwi green. And the wings spread out, this beak-like mouth and a snake-like tail. Look at the back of the wings. So this is the Electrovore. Rawr. That one's fun. <laughs> yes, definitely be sure to go and check out the Gallant Goblin after you're done here and subscribe. You'll want to, especially if you enjoy seeing miniature content. All right, moving along. So here, bum, bum, bum. Nope. So this is the Shro Medium or SRO Medium. I'm not sure. Is that supposed to be SRO or Shro? Uh, but this is four of 32. Again, clear plastic base. But look at this mechanical creature. And I like that we have the different tones of metals as well. It's not just all one metal color. With some extra details, you can see there are these bluish metallics. You have these pale gold metallics, silvers, yellows. It really is a very interesting sculpt. And the more you look at it, you're getting these extra little hints of details going on here. Sentient robotic organism. Ooh, so SRO. <laughs> Thank you. So you even get this. Look at that. Just the piston work in the back. Those little extra touches I always find really very much make the miniatures. Give them those little extra nods to what they are and where they exist and the environment in which they are. Um, yes. Yeah, so let's keep going. Yeah. Cause we have 32 of these to get through. This one cracks me up and I'll tell you why. Uh, this is our next one. And this is our, hold on. I am looking for the name. So this is Bangrid. Am I reading that right? Hold on, I'm, I'm also listening to a child speaking behind the door. I'm trying to see if they're trying to reach me. Uh, but take a look. This is this amazingly almost Cthulhu-esque type critter. But the reason why I locked into it is because it's got like this jazz bantrid. Thank you, Gallant Goblin. It's got this almost like jazz hands appearance to its pose. So for me, I find it rather endearing. But take a look at this. You get this blend of, it's this very periwinkle blue with a more reddish purple at the base. And there's some fantastic texture that happens in this miniature, which you can see as I play it through the light. Autocorrect is killing me in general. <laughs> but this is the Bantrid, okay? And this one is five of 32. 
of what you could potentially pull from the boosters of the Starfinder Battles Planets of Peril. Let's keep moving along here, folks. Gotta keep moving. Okay, so uh, let me see here. Here we have... I'm trying to get it so you can see it too. This is the Yashtari, I believe, is the... <laughs> I try and give you a context of what the color looks like, because I also know that sometimes that uh, screens can change things up a little bit. So if I can give you a reference color when it comes to what these miniatures look like to Shiri, thank you. Uh, so this one is 10 of 32, but let's take a look here. So this one you actually have, you're gonna laugh, it's a cornflower blue but you have these hints of mauve that go along in the highlights, this vibrant red mouth, and then this fantastic burst of yellow and orange, like true yellow and orange, classic yellow and orange in the center of the chest here. But look at that gaping maw. I mean, I don't want to encounter this. I mean, I do the thrill of uh, encountering it. Yes, that would be fantastic. But here's the Tashtari. Tesh there we go also known as the laser wolf. Oh, fun. So there's that one. Okay, let's keep going. I'm just marching along. And up next, I have a skittering, or a skittermander, sorry, not a skitterman, skittering mander. It's a skittermander. And this one is, looking for the number here. Looks like maybe six of 32. But here's your Skittermander. And again, these are just, the sculpts themselves are so, I'm gonna say cur I'm curious because of the differences in them. They catch your attention. <laughs> but you can see we have the translucent plastic coming into play of this classic sky blue. And then you have this mix of colors of this mauve, purplish mauve, and then an amethyst purple going through it. And again, great details in it. Lots of texture to the back. And this almost dinosaur-like appearance to its face. There, I'm the setting just a little bit more on the focus. Bear with me. There we go. Where I want to hold them today and where I have the focus are two very different things. There we go, five of 32. Okay, so that one's five of 32, which means the other one was... Let's see here. Eight of 32. There we go. Put that one down. And here we are. Okay, this one. Uh, this one definitely goes into some like sci-fi horror movies that I have seen in the past that have skeeved me out to no end. And oh, this this is fun. This is the I'm not quite sure the pronunciation. It's the Orokoran, I believe, is the the name the Orokoran. But you can see the base right there. This is 24 of 32. But look at this. <laughs> look at this, okay? It is this insectoid-like creature in that classic nope, 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 nope pose. I'm sorry, you put this on the table and I as a player, mm-mm, mm-mm, nope, mm-mm. But I love the tension of the pounce that goes into the sculpt. There is motion in this still creature because you can see it's got that tongue, or is it a proboscis, lashing out. The tension in the muscles, even the positioning, its form, 
Like this is on the attack and you can tell it's ready to attack. I always highly enjoy it when sculpts look like this. It just, it adds to the environment. It adds to the creation of what you are presenting to your players on the table, or it even just great makes for a great story when you set these up on display in your collection. Very, yes, very Resident Evil, very Lovecraft influence type of things here. Yeah. Yeah, the Skittermander looks cute, right? It does. The Skittermander looks cute. This does not. <laughs> this is not something I would say, oh, it's a cutie pie. Let me just pull it out and make friends with it. And I'm one of those people who will tend to be like, well, let me let me see if I can talk with it first. It's not one of those. No, <laughs> not one of those things. We're like, let me see what we can do first. Let's see how that, uh, you know, interaction goes before we start pulling out the weapons. Nope. This is a no. This is a we're, we're going to go on the attack right away. OK, so here now we have the Patra Stalker. And that is. Do, 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 do. I believe that one is 18 of 32. But take a look. I, as a lover of kits, am quite happy about this one. Because look at this, you have this cat-like creature, these wonderful markings, and these fantastically vivid blue eyes. It's just a pale silver fur, black markings. But then look at the suit. It's this fantastic mix of emerald green metallics. You get these accents of lighter green and silver and hints of gold as well, along with the gold metallic on the gun. It's it is a fantastic sculpt. This is one of my more favorite ones, to be honest. And this is the other thing I like with all of this hard, sharp metal you have in this particular sculpt. You also get this lovely bit of softness with the material of the scarf draped around the neck. So it's just a wonderful blend of lines, quite frankly. But that's another beauty. I even love the expression. It's this serene, like, don't mess with me expression. Really a great sculpt. Okay, so there's that one. Okay, 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 okay. Let's keep going. Here's the next one. We have a Formian Warrior, 9 of 32. And take a look. Again, steering into this insect-like look. Blend of organic and metals. But holy heck. I do not want to mess with this one. Nope. This one means business. Even with the thorax sort of curled under, looking ready to strike like a scorpion almost. But it's a darker metal blend. Think of like a dark copper and gunmetal. I actually have to keep my hand behind it because right now with the black background, it's going to get sucked into that. And then for the gun itself, you can see the gun is more of the silver metallic with this accent of red streaked down the center. But so much texture has gone into this one. Look at this. This has been in some battles. It has seen some wear and tear, so to speak. And I like that. I like it when it's not perfectly shiny and brand new looking. I'd rather see that these creatures have some experience under their belt, so to speak. But yeah. <laughs> it's like, I want the ring. It is a sizable gun. I you don't want to mess around. You got that one. Even the chest plate. See, look at that. There's just so many little nuanced details that are going into these sculpts now that I really want to highlight and show off for you. You have the strap going across the chest to attach the shoulder piece. The more you look at these, the more you will discover, quite frankly. Uh, mana, mana. Keep going. Okay, we got the first row tackled. Moving on to my second row. This is one. <laughs> this is a fun one. 
So here we have the Swarm Mind Reaper. 23 of 32. Ready? Ta-da! I thoroughly enjoy this particular sculpt. You have a lot of dynamic action happening just with the, I'm gonna call them frills, just with the shape of the frills happening up top here. There is motion, there is movement to them. And you have this fantastic, you can almost hear this miniature. I love it when you look at a miniature and you can practically hear the sound it makes coming out. Again, the vivid turquoise blue eyes, sort of a, no, we're gonna call them tan teeth. And the teeth themselves are not sharp. They have this, you know, this sort of motley mix of shapes to them, which I find quite charming, frankly. And the skin of the body has this black tar appearance to it. Like it looks like it's been formed of tar because it has that sheen that hot tar will get on a summer day. You know what I'm talking about when you see it on the pavement? So I appreciate that even though this is, and that's a very tricky thing to pull off with miniatures that have black used in them. Getting them to pop because black is so good at making things just disappear, but you can see the details are playing off beautifully in the light. You can see there is this texture. You can see there are these extra little panels and everything happening. So it's, it's, it's lovely to see that even though black is its main color, you can see all this extra detail put into it. And then of course you have its weapon, which looks almost like a vertebrae stack going through there. And this other, it's this mustardy orange so I'm going to call that one going on there. But yeah, it's a really fun, clever little miniature. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> yeah, well, that's just it. I love what Gallant Goblin does because they're able to put all these miniatures into context for gameplay, which is fantastic and wonderful. They speak to how you can use these on the table and everything like that. I like to speak to the miniatures and the quality of what you're going to be getting, because I think that's important too. So you know what the minis are going to look like when you speak with me, but you also know what they can be, what can be done with them when you work with the Gallant Goblin. I think, you know, that's why I always say branch out and see what everyone has to say about everything. Cause you're getting all these different aspects and opinions and takes on the same product and you get that much more out of it. Um, speaking of chat, let me look at the chat. I've been negligent of the chat. My apologies. Um, do, 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 do. that's just it. Um, Bobby two shades, because this has the space age feeling, there is this nostalgia factor to it. Um, I don't know if you were here when I said it before, but so many of us grew up with space agey themed cartoons and shows and movies. And we got excited for them when they were happening and we'd sit there and watch them avidly for me as a person who loves to collect miniatures and see these, I'm excited just because it's like, here I am tapping into something that reflects on a love that I have for sci-fi-esque miniatures. So this is, this is fun for me to go through. And like, that's why I am geeking out over the sculpts and like, oh, look at this detail. And look at the fact that it looks like an insect and it's a machine put together because it harkens to so many interesting and fascinating concepts and creatures that have come from movies that have come from shows and cartoons and comic books and things like that. So yeah, I'm very much like, you know, me, I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying what we're seeing today, quite frankly, like this one. <laughs> Okay, so here's the next in line. And this one is, I'm trying to get it so we can read this one. This is the Osharu Head Teacher. Okay, 12 of 32. But look at the colors. First of all, this one has personality to it, full stop. I want to meet this NPC. I want to encounter this creature in game. You just have this Osharu head teacher. Yep. You want to meet because look at the, the expression on the face. It's like, yes, may I help you? I love that there is this personality just in the form itself. And you have this great combination of colors. The skin is again, this Kiwi green, black eyes, 
And it's sort of this blend of like a snail-like creature. Okay, it reminds me very much of a snail in its appearance. And you have these lovely robes that are a mix of the uh, overcoat is tans and orangey reds. And underneath the robe itself is a mix of ivories and sky blues with hints of yellows and browns for details in the print work. But look at just this hand. Just the way it has this, you know, like you can tell this creature doesn't necessarily have bones in it. It's humanoid, yes, but maybe not fully skeletal. I just think that's super fascinating. And the weapon is fun. Or the staff, I should say. I don't want to assume it's a weapon, but the staff. Again, it's that lovely dark black tone, but you have these hints of gold, brushed gold, and then yellow gold on it, which I just find ever so much fun. It, this, this honestly, it's truly, this is one I would keep out in presentation mode in a collection because it's, you would stop and look and could almost have a conversation with it. The fact that as a head teacher, it's it's been captured. Absolutely. You get that completely with the form and the sculpt. Okay, moving along, though I don't want to, because quite frankly, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> and the gallant goblet agrees. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Next. Oh, thank you, Daniel. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> hello, what you looking at? How are you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. Okay, now we have the Swarm Koravox. Ready for this one? I like presenting the bottom first and then flipping up because <laughs> look at this. This one's just wicked cool. There is no way around it. It's this bluish, bluish. It's this blue steel metallic. I mean, you can even see it like close to my ring. Um, it has this lovely blue steel to it but with these pops of vivid red, along with some silver details too, you can see through here. But again, it's this insectoid blend with mechanical details, which to me, just that just amps up the creepy factor. And you have these sort of wings, these wing-like appendages on the back. Very much reminds me of a beetle. Like, you know how Ladybug will open up its wings? Thank you, Bobby Two Shades, for hanging out. Oh, that's not even something I thought of, Rick. The footprints that the head teacher would leave. But I like it. It's touches like that that make a creature believable when you see aspects of things that you see in your everyday life. It's like, okay, yes, we know this is an out of a world, out of this world creature, but that's kind of like what a beetle's wings will do. But the color, though, is. Honestly, I am a huge fan of this color, this metallic blue color. It's beautiful. It's a stunning color. I'd like to see more of this metallic blue, to be honest. It's it's truly a striking tone. And it's not one you see used often. So it really makes this particular one remarkable because of that. I'm going to put that one down. Do -do 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 -do. Moving along. Okay, this one I think people are just going to kick out of because of reasons. All right, here we have the Kazar. 11 of 32. Ready for this one? Ready for this reveal? Boink. <laughs> okay, so when I saw this one, this is where you get, it's not so much insectoid as it is a plant-like creature in look. You have these sinewy vines. It's very much a mix of emerald green highlighted with more of a, I'm going to say lime green. And then this interesting topper, it's the head, but it's this honey yellow translucent plastic. It's got this great texture to it. I'm not going to say it's like a brain, but it has a texture of a brain. Does that make sense? But it just, it makes for such a creepy critter. With these overextended limbs, the knuckles that are dragging on the ground, and these appendages that stick up and out. I mean, to me, this is a thing of terror because that, 
That's something that speaks of this thing can shoot out, attack, and pull back in. Mm-mm. Nope, 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 nope. But I do enjoy all these little extra textured details that you're seeing here. It's just wonderfully lovely. Okay, so again, that is the Kazar, 11 of 32. One of the many you could potentially pull. Next. Ugh, this one gives me the heebies. <laughs> The color palette is fantastic. And that's the other thing um, that I wanted to speak to as well once we got through everyone, but let's talk about it now since it's been brought up, since Rick mentioned it. The colors used in this collection are vibrant and vivid and lovely. And for me as a miniature painter, I get excited about it because it is something that I think is relevant to how you present a collection. And this was very well done. Oh my God, Daniel, Men in Black. You could very easily take this set and then pull miniatures from um, other things that we do, like Euroclix, and very easily create a Men in Black uh, homebrew if you wanted to, without question. Okay, here is the next one up, and it's a Stride Mander, Strider Mander, sorry, Strider Mander, 14 of 31. Take a look. Oh. Okay, so first of all, the musculature that is evident in this sculpt, I am thrilled. I am absolutely thrilled with that. Yes, Friday Night Clicks, that's a very good suggestion. The shield agents from Clicks would be perfect for a Men in Black homebrew campaign if you want to sort of create that using these and Hero Clicks miniatures. That would be a great way to combine the two. But you get this fantastic texture of the skin as well as the musculature showing through. And it's the stone gray detail work of the paint color and then a lighter gray to bring out all the texture that's happening here. It has almost this feline fox-like lupine influence. But then there's this, I'm, I'm gonna call it an umbilical. I don't know what the technical term is for this, but holy heck is that just creepiness. And that is Pardon me, somehow a cat hair got caught up in that one. But this is just wicked awesome. You can see this texture that goes along, almost like an earthworm. There's there's beautiful texture in all of this. And then the face with just the black eyes, little details in the ear. Yeah, you can see why this one gives the GBC. <laughs> it's a feeding tube. Okay, so umbilical is not too far off. But yeah, look at that. And it's a good size too. And I like, I like how you have these eight limbs going on here. Four arms on the top, four legs on the bottom. And the front legs have almost like this serene pose, but the back legs are like ready to pounce and move. Night gods. Oh, interesting. There are so many in here that would fall well into a Lovecraftian setup without question. Um, great for space, great for Lovecraft. Like there are so many potential crossovers you could use these miniatures for. Not just Starfinder. They're a, they're a solid collection for anyone who is an avid, 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 avid tabletop game player who uses miniatures and terrain or who just likes to collect miniatures and terrain, quite frankly. So there's that one, which I think the sculpt is beautiful, but also like, blah, creeps me out. <laughs> but that's a good thing. All right, and now we're getting into, this I thought was a fun aspect. Hold on, let me take a sip of tea because I'm starting to get raspy voice going on here. Mm. I also, because I have a genuine desk now, have my mug warmer, which means that I'm no longer drinking cold tea. So I'm not going to be doing my cold tea wincing anymore. Probiscus. It, yeah. That could be another one for it. Okay, so let's take a look here. One moment, please. So here we have a Pegasus, 29 of 32, and we are talking about spaceships now. Which, this is this is little V getting extremely excited because I collected Hot Wheels and Transformers when I was little. I loved them ever so much. So for me, seeing spaceships like this is just like, ugh, I get so excited over this stuff. But as you can see, 
It is this fantastic vivid orange red with black detailings and just a hint of an amethyst purple thrown in for fun. But you have it lofted up in air with a transparent base going on here and this particular hexagon shape. Okay, so it's not the classic circle that you'll see for the figures. You have a hexagon going on here, which I find lovely. Yep, starships. I'm just, oh yeah, I totally got into Transformers. Transformers, Voltron, um, G.I. Joe, He-Man. Now I'm just rattling off nostalgia. <laughs> but there you go. I like that they have the differentiation here. Like this is the starship. These are the figures. So there's that one. Um, why is the uh, Gallant Goblin? Do you know, are these, is it a hexagon setup for Starfinder? And the scales of the ships, I'm actually not sure because I don't play the game. Um, I found, I got this fantastic poster for Starfinder from PAX uh, two years ago. Hex space maps for the ship movement. Thank you so much, Leonardo. Let me just look here really quick. Is that up there? I literally just found this like five minutes before the stream started. I'm like, let me get this up there because that's fun. Okay, so it is it is hex based in motion for Starfighter. See, I'm learning something today too. Uh, so here we have another ship and this one is, let's get that into focus. So here we have the BMC hauler. Mauler? No, Mauler, not hauler, Mauler. 25 of 32. And this, <laughs> this one is fantastic. Yeah, if we scaled the ships up to be the actual scale, that would be a very different story as to how big these boosters are gonna be. But this reminds me very much of those old bombers from World War II and how they used to paint them up and give them personality. I am thrilled to see that carry through on something like this. It is a classic Kelly green in color, classic yellow bands as well. And you have this lovely turquoise blue accent thrown in along with some white and silver. Needs nose art. <laughs> but I love the blend of the futuristic spacecraft with that nod to those very old airplanes. Oh, cool. But yeah, that's a fun one. That's fun just for personality. It's almost like something you could actually see like in a cartoon, you know? That's something I would expect to actually start opening its mouth and start talking to us. I would not be surprised at all if that spaceship had a personality and a name and, you know, some backstory to it, a la a certain company <laughs> movie chain. <laughs> uh, all right, so moving along. Here we have the Drake, which is a very straightforward ship. Classic tan. A burnt orange and black detailing, some silver accents. It reminds me of a lot of classic ships that you'd see in space movies and shows. Very straightforward. Yeah. Yes. Very similar to that. It's just that classic form. I mean, you look at it and it takes you back to a whole bunch of different memory, well, at least for me personally. <laughs> a USB starship? Viper. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Although that would be fun, wouldn't it? So there is that one. Classic lines. Classic, clean, simple, straightforward lines. It is. Yes. Very Star Trekky. Agreed. Um, I think that that looks like that is it for that is it for the ships. Okay, so that's, that's the three ships that we'll see in that one. Uh, and here we have moving along. We have more of these. So here, now that I know that is the SRO small, and this is six of thirty-two. Ta-dum! 
And again, you know how I said there are miniatures that you can just hear? This one, I can hear like the gears whirring because of the treads at the bottom here. You can hear the everything whirring and moving and beeps and pops and all of that. And oh yeah, this is just a fun one. It is a steel metallic, classic steel color, black accents, bright orange. You know, if Wally and Bastion had a kid, yes. Quite frankly, yes. Let me show you in scale. Is the one I want. There'd you go. I put you down somewhere. Where'd it go? Here we go. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Scale. You can see the difference in size. Oh, look at that. It looks like they're looking at each other. Why did my heart just go like... Oh. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> oh my god, that's like inadvertent adorable. But that gives you a sense of the difference in size between the standard and the small SRO. Look at that! Oh my god! You guys! It's like our own little Wally love story. I'm... Or our... Yeah, there's just so many... There's so many references. There's so many references going on through my head right now. This is why I'm excited about this set, because there's so much here. You can look at one miniature and you can be tapped into like five different... Oh, makes me happy. Simple as that, it makes me happy. Um, oh, I lied. There is another. Hold on. There's a couple more ships. I take it back. Slightly bigger ones. I lied, I lied, I lied. Okay, this one I know people have been excited to see, so I'm just going to go and bring out this one. So here we have the Uplifted Bear Avenger. I'm not kidding. 16 of 32. Look at this fellow. Talk about makes my heart happy. You have this bear creature with this fantastic hammer in hand. I love the mix of the yellow metallic, black metallic with the vivid turquoise blue going on here. But holy moly, this to me is a memorable one. Absolutely. And again, I hear like this gruff gravelly voice for character reasons. But look at this. You can see all the details that have gone into the armor. Those little extra touches, the extra paneling, the extra indentations. Look at the back. Look at all this, all this little extra detail work. Even the definition here, you can see that. For poking through. Those, those are the little details I like to point out and show everyone because I truly feel they make such a difference in what you're getting with your miniatures. It's not just, you know, a basic form pulled out so it kind of looks like a mechanical, a mechanical space suit. You can tell it's mechanical, but you can tell it was something that was designed specifically for this form. Which I think is lovely and wonderful and adds to the storytelling of everything going on here. So that is your bear, uh, the uplifted, uplifted bear Avenger. I, I like that one a lot. All right. This one brings up memories of a different genre. <laughs> the, de the details are wonderful. I mean, have you seen a bear's foot pads? They're pretty hefty. Don't ask how I know that. Okay. Here's the next one. A Golem Cybernetic, 21 of 32. Chat just taller who this reminds you of when I flip this over, if you haven't seen this one yet. Because the second I saw one of these, oh boy. Oh boy. Did this bring up memories of staying up late <laughs> I have not been stepped on by a bear, but there are there are brown bears in my area. Or black bears, sorry. Black bears in my area. Brown bears would be a very different story. Um, but the details on this one. Let's talk about this one. 
Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yep. 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 We're, we're, we're getting it. Um, take care, Theo. Have a great one. Uh, and here you can see you have all these little extra details, like the sinuous wiring going on underneath what's left of skin and these mechanical additions. I mean, oh, just the blend of organic and mechanic really shows through on this one. This is what I wanted to show off, especially look at the detail work that's happening through here. See all that? It really, it pops. And it's a classic silver metallic. It's been washed over with a black for sure to give it a more aged look. But there are so many little nuanced details that have gone into this sculpt. And just the expression on the face, I, wah. I don't think I'd want to encounter one of these. Nope. Nope. Yeah, I think we get to a certain point and I have to rotate the comments through with uh, Restream's chat. But yes, this this is, this is, again, this is the Golem Cybernetic, which, you know, depending on what you're playing, definitely could uh, be used as other things in other ways. Because hello, that is creepy. <laughs> okay, moving along. This one I like just because color. I'm not even kidding. All right, jumping in. We have a Barathu, as I think is how it should be said, Barathu. It is 15 of 32. Take a look here. Now we're getting to like this almost aquatic-like influence because this very much reminds me of a man of war floating in the water with these bright, vivid, corally pinks and yellows as highlights with these long lavender tendrily fronds or tendrils rather, it could be tendrils, just sort of trailing out below. It is nice and creepy. Evil Robocop. That, yeah, it could be an evil Robocop, but this is a fun one. And here we're going back to those bright colors. It almost has, when you see it head on, it looks like a shrimp in a way, but honestly, like for me, it strikes me most as a man of war that you see, you know, when they're like, you know, shut down everything, get out of the water. Those things are menacing in and of themselves to see this floating around as an alien creature. Oh, heck no. It does have a Krang like feel to it, doesn't it? I agree with you there on that one, what you're looking at. So there's this one. And again, there's just all this fantastic texture that's gone into these. This is a big set. We're probably going to be here until about 1.30 at least, folks. So thank you for hanging with me so far. And again, if you came in a little bit after, uh, these are up for pre-order. The release date is March 17th. Target release date, March 17th. Uh, so contact your uh, FLGS, Friendly Local Game Store. If you don't have one, then check out shop.wizkids.com to place your order. And now we're going to move on to the next one. This one reminds me of someone, but I can't pinpoint who and it's been bugging me. So maybe you can help me out who the Shobad or Shobahad uh, reminds me of. It reminds me of someone, but look at the scale detail that's going into this suit. And I love that we have all this detail happening with a little skull in the center, the different colors. It's this rich emeraldy green, classic yellow, Fifth Element. Oh my gosh. Reminds me of something from Fifth and Hitchhikers. Yes, 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 yes. Like I said, these tap into so many different shows and movies. I'm getting strong Fifth Element vibes from this guy. Lilo Dallas Multipass. One of my favorite movies. Not even kidding. But look at this. How you have the wraps going around the sheath here for the scimitar. Is that a scimitar? Uh, sword. I'll say sword. But again, the texture, the little nuanced touches, all of that carries on. Yeah, I think it's, see, he's just trying to pump your gas. What you're looking at? <laughs> I think for me, it was, it, yeah, a little bit of Hitchhiker's Guide and a little bit of Fifth Element are calling out to me right now with this fellow. But that classic gray skin. mouth look at that 
Mm. That's a fun one. That really is cool looking. All right, here we go. We're going to keep plugging along here, folks. And here you have a Gargacol, uh, 22 of 32. And ta-da. This one makes me uncomfortable. I don't know why. A little of General Grievous, Grievous too. Yes. Oh, I didn't even think of that one. Dead Eye Duck. Hmm. This is, I, don't, I think it's like the, between the translucent wings and just the form of it and like this, oh, I don't know. This one like just, it creeps me out in the good way. Oh, yes, very much Friday Night Clicks. Very much Stranger Things feeling here, okay? Um, and that is still a show I cannot, I have tried watching Stranger Things so many times and I get the worst night terrors from it. I'm not even kidding. Um, but yeah, this one, oh, I know what this reminds me of. I kind of get like a Nothic, like a futuristic Nothic creature blend going on here. A Nothic with wings, God help me. Um, but oh, oh, just, you have this flesh-like tan color going on with it. And then this mossy, slimy green, Pan's Labyrinth. That's another good one, Shannon. Yes. And leading up to this, I mean, is it mouth? Is it eye? Is it both? It's just an unsettling creature. But I love the use of this plastic, again, the transparent plastic for these insect-like wings going on. It's almost like a mix of plant and insect. You know, just from that slimy quality. But yeah, this is this is not one. No, not not one I'd want to mess with. I I try and avoid at all costs and encounter. Put you down there. Uh, OK, we're going to go for another ship here. Like I said, I thought I thought that there was more ships. Here we have. A Norikama drop ship, 26 of 32. Again, that bright, vivid Kelly green with classic yellow accents and black accents. And more of that nod back to like B-52s, World War II type of plane artwork that they would do. See, it has those eyes at the front. I love that little nod to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading through your comments. But yes, this, this is a fun one. Pretty classic in line. Some fun details in the back. That's another one of the ships, again, on the hexagon base. And now we're going to pull out another ship. So these are... Doo -doo -doo -doo. This is the Vindicus Tyrant. Thunderbirds, yes. Definitely Thunderbirds. And here, now we have some of that turquoise blue being brought in, but again, the Kelly green, yellow accents, black accents, even some white details going in here. This one definitely has sort of a Star Wars vibe for me. That's kind of what it's tapping in. Maybe a little bit of Star Trek too. But yeah, that's another fun ship. really is all those extra details on the top too my goodness all right so that gives us how many just quickly look here do, 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 do. so basically in the set you have potential pulls of one two three four five okay so five ships involved in this set and you fell over stand up you creepy thing you now we're going to move on to the larger miniatures, which I think are fantastic. All right, here we have. This is a swarm. There we go. Swarm Thresher Lord. 31 of 32. You ready for this guy? Let me fix the focus because we're getting bigger now. That's why I was working across the top to the bottom because I wanted to try and avoid 
toggling far too much. Do I just have the same little bit of cat hair following around? Probably. Look at this mini. Again, we have a very strong insectoid feel to it. I'm getting strong, strong praying mantis vibes. But the color blends are beautiful. It's this olive green into that kiwi green again. You have this rusty orange color. Again, with that turquoise blue popping up. Which I'm really liking. But this mouth, the mandibles, like just the way it opens up in multi directions. It's not something you want to mess around with here, folks. Just give you a quick little spin around here. All the Starship Troopers. Yes. Like I said, there are so many shows and movies. Look at this. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. And all the texture and the detail going on through here. Not just in the wings, but also, you know, these sectioned off bits of the body. Very much like you'd see on an insect's thorax, but carried through on appendages, on legs and arms. This is one I would absolutely keep out in the open and on display because, I mean, grab another mini four scale. I mean, it is a respectable size, but I would totally keep this out on a bookshelf. I might even keep it out on a bookshelf. <laughs> and I love the blending of the colors. It's beautifully done. All right, I'm running out of, there we go, background room. There we go, there we go, there we go. And then here, let's move on to this. Do, 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 do. Next up, we're taking a look at the Sarasan Sniper. Or Sarsian, sorry, Sarsian Sniper, 19 of 32. Again, let's take a look at the back here with the wings. This fiery orange, transparent plastic, almost ribbon-like. You can almost hear the wings fluttering because of that. You have this creature, almost elfin because of those, those pointed ears, but almost feline as well with the structure of the face. This lovely purple and black and yellow combination, schematic colors. The wings are really cool. And just the weapon itself. I mean, it's almost as long as the creature is tall but you have it in this action pose, lofted up in the air, piercing yellow eyes. Quite dynamic, really. Wings are, I honestly, I like, this is not something you see often in terms of how wings are represented. So I'm extremely appreciative of that. Butterfly sniper. You know, you know? It is a long gun. Mm -hmm. So that's another one of the larger ones. Um, bum, 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 bum. Okay, this one, this is honestly, when I saw photos of this one, I'm like, okay, that's one of my favorites. It's a Kisserik, I believe. It is 18 of 32. But the colors, this one's just a party. It also sort of reminds me of a chameleon in a way, uh, just with its shape and form. <clears throat> Pardon. But you have this vivid, bright, bright iris purple, lime green, the rusty orange that goes into a more vivid orange, the striping, the blending, and then these tentacles, tendrils coming out of the front. It really is a fascinating creature, just in form. Like it's cute and terrifying at the same time. You know, do you want to make it a pet or do you want to run away? That is the question, folks. But you can see there's some muscular detail going on here. Thin work. It's just such an interesting creature. And the curled tail, I think the curled tail, it's like almost like questioning. Such personality because of it. It's like an alien sea bass tiger with a party page. <laughs> Well, that's it, folks. That sums it up. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that was perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right, let me put this one down. We're getting near the end. We have three left, including this one. 
Um, this is one, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably saw this one. So this is the Resnia, Resnia, 32 of 32. Look at this. This one is just mischief embodied from the sculpt. You have these grinning heads poking out and around from this very forest-like, plant-like critter. It's kind of like a tarantula with three heads is the best way to describe it. And like this little angler element happening here. But I love this vivid green. It's a spring green. Again, we're back into this cornflower blue, classic brown. And the heads are just a very basic black. And you can see the wood texture, bark-like texture going on here. Very much grass or mossy look. I guess to like the, the fur of the body. But then here, again, almost like that earthworm-like look and appearance, but also dealing with the black color, but you're getting all these details and textures that pop out, which is wonderful. So that one's just ever so much fun. Another one I would honestly keep out and display just because of its interest. It very much could blend into the forest. And that is something I love to do in general with games is have things that sort of blend in. Mimics, what? No. Um, let me put that one down there. Two more to go. And then I will let you all on your merry way. And thank you so much for hanging out with me type of situation. So here we have a dragon kin. This is a dragon kin, 17 of 32. And take a look at this one. I love the for serious expression on the face. It is just so much fun. But then this, the weapon I'm trying to show you here, this weapon is just so cool. It's strapped onto the back, gold wrap type of thing, gold straps, I should say. But it has this great form to it, which almost mimics the horns themselves. Just a fun play of lines and this lovely kiwi green eye. And it's this light gray that's accented with tan, golden tan highlighting. But you can see more of this texture is brought through on the body. It is very cool. A dragon with a gun, pretty much. It is a dragon with a gun. Extremely reptilian in the face, which I appreciate. Like this reminds me almost of like, uh, um, why am I blanking on gecko? Gecko. Has almost a gecko-like look to the face structure. But yeah, that's, that's someone I would take seriously standing in front of me. That gun and that expression, heck yes. Absolutely. And then, Finally, last but not least, because we're getting onto the 130 mark, we have a sharp wing, 30 of 32. Look at this. Can we talk about the eyes and the wings? Should we talk about the eyes and the wings? Look at this. It's just the eyes and the wings, the eyes and the claws, the eyes in the front. The eyes and the head. It's just such a fantastically creepy creature. You have the spines running along the tail, highlighted in this color. This is again like a mauve. And then you go into a lavender purple. And the color here is, uh, we're gonna call that a taupe, a dark taupe. With vivid yellow eyes, feline-like. Just the jaw on that, the offset jaw. It was like a barracuda. It's just such an interesting blend of different creatures. Bat-like wings. I mean, this is like an island of Dr. Moreau combination. <laughs> what if a blue whale had teeth and flew? What you're looking at, yep, that, that's a good way to sum it up. But yes, that is the final creature. And you can tell I'm trying to get it in here because it's, it's let me get da, 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 da. Why don't you come out and play? And for scale, let's see, size difference there. So that is what the final one would be of your selection of various pulls from the Planets Apparel 
of Starfinder Battles from Paizo. Uh, so that was all 32 of these, as well as the docking bay. Let's just flip up to the front here. So, oh my goodness, that was a lot to go through. And many of you stuck around for that one. Thank you so much. This is one of those collections where, like I said before, if you are someone who is very much into sci-fi and has a love for all things futuristic, out of this world, planetary travel, things like that, huge thumbs up for in and of itself that alone. All right. It is a strong collection because of the colors, because of the textures, because of the sculpts, because of the differences that you're going to see in each of these characters. But in terms of gameplay, you have some fantastic selection in and of itself there too. So if you are getting into Starfinder Battles, I would definitely say jump in and get yourself started with this particular collection. And don't forget, you can also pick up the Starfinder Battles uh, Galactic Villains and Galactic Heroes, which came out over in the summer of 2020 as well. Um, but if you are interested in these, do be sure you reach out to your local game store. If you have one near you, see what they're able to do to place your pre-order today. If you don't have one near you, you can always go to shop.wizkids.com and check it out there. If you're on YouTube, you can check it out. There are all those links in the description below. I will be going over to Twitch after the fact and adding that in to post-production. So that will be there for a little bit for those of you catching this as a VOD. I'm trying to think of what else there is. Uh, you can join me next week. We're going to be taking a closer look at uh, the Warlock tiles, curves and angles for the dungeon tiles. I'll be doing some builds with that as well as taking a look at the town watch as well as the merchants, I want to say. I believe it was merchants. A town watch and merchants accessory sets is the plan for next week. Uh, so you can join me again next week and that, that's fun. It's a different setup. I'll be like putting the room together live and you can see how these new pieces work with the old pieces or not the old sets, how the curves and angles sets work with the standard sets and everything like that. So that should be a lot of fun too. Uh, but yes, thank you again for joining me. This was so much fun. If you haven't yet, if you are new, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, you can by all means hit that subscribe or like button or follow button because you know we're jumping across the difference the differences now between YouTube and Twitch. Uh, would love to have you join us. And this is something that happens every Wednesday. I am VMuse. This is Mini Mayhem. I have a great time sharing things with you in terms of all things miniatures for RPG. Uh, so again, if you're ever interested to catch things after the fact, you can always catch the VODs on our YouTube channel. You can see some of the other sets that we've had unveiled for you and uh, make sure you uh, stick around and check things out in the future every Wednesday at noon. You can also stop by every Tuesday at noon Eastern time to see Much Ado About Gaming. That is where Jessa Blackthorn will show off our latest board games for you and you can take a closer look at those. And uh, don't forget for our Heroclix, fan, we owe Heroclix fans, we have the Scott Porter unboxings of the latest releases coming down the pipeline. So uh, I think that covers everything. Yes, I hope so. I believe so. I think so. And we are hitting that 130 mark right about now. So perfect timing. Absolutely wonderful to everyone in the chat for your questions, for your inquiries. Uh, thank you so much. Very much appreciated. If I missed it, my apologies. Sometimes it's a matter of the chat skews and moves, and I'm also keeping an eye on other windows at the same time. Uh, so you're always welcome to go over and check us out on our socials. Please be sure to follow us Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as well. WizKids, check it out. Links are in the YouTube description as well, and I'll be adding them into Twitch too. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to cover it for today. So thank you again, everyone. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I had a great time going through this and just connecting to so many things from memory lane. Let's just put it that way. And uh, I will see you on the flip side, as always, on my own socials as The Crafting Muse. And until next Wednesday, everyone, I'm going to wrap this up like I always do. Be good to yourselves and be good to each other. Take care, everyone. Mwah. Bye.